So, and before I forget, and this is joint work with uh, Itai Benyamini, Hugo Dominil Copan, and uh, Cyril Luca from uh, Paris 7 now, though so it was our postdoc when he did. So let's start with usual classical idea layers defined by uh, Diaconis and Fulton. I know there are lots of people in the audience who think they know what is idea layer, but do they? <laughs> okay, so. So, you put, say, uh, in 2D, uh, the results are in general dimension, but for drawing in 2D is easier. You put a cookie on every side. And now you have a random walker that walks around the uh, uh, lattice. When it finds a cookie, it eats it. And then the cookie magically transports it uh, back to zero. And then it continues walking. So the cookie at zero is eaten immediately. Then, you know, the cookie at one of the neighbors is eaten, and so on. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the walker simply continues walking uh, and eating cookies as it goes along. OK, is the definition clear? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, let me. Where do you start? You start, you start at zero. Zero is special. Yeah. Okay? Does the behavior of the walk change when it eats cookies? No, it always does random walk. The only difference is that if after a step it, it gets to a, uh, to a site with a cookie, it eats the cookie and returns to zero. The cookie then is no longer the site. So, second time it will come to this site, it will do a simple random walk. Okay? So, the cookies disappear gradually disappear with time. Then it comes back to the origin after it eats a cookie. Yes, yes, yes. These are magical cookies and they transport it to the origin. Okay? So the walk is transported, not the cookie is transported, the walk is transported. The walker, yes, the cooker is transported, yes. Yes, sorry, maybe I misspoke. Okay? More questions about the model? So in particular, the path is not continued? Uh, no, no. So, uh, so what's, what's known? So let's, let's uh, give some uh, history. So uh, I should keep my, okay, otherwise the volume, okay. So this was defined by uh, Diaconis and, why didn't, uh, yes, Diaconis and Fulton. So I don't know, maybe uh, people expected me to talk about uh, uh, um, <laughs> A linearly reinforced random walk, but at least we have a diaconis in this talk. So, so, so in 91, is this correct? Uh, well, okay, that's what it says. As, uh, well, there were all kinds of reasons to, uh, to discuss that. As usual, with diaconis, there were some algebraic reasons, which I will not discuss too deeply. And there were relations to the much more famous DLA, which is, you know, okay, you'll have to look at the model a bit different to see the connection uh, uh, in the DLA model. I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> what? Who's, which Fulton is this? Which Fulton is this? And uh, a year after that, in a it was shown that this is markedly different from IDLA. So in this paper, they showed that the set of uh, eaten cookies, which is exactly the analog of the cluster in usual DLA, is a ball with some perturbations, which uh, afterward were improved. I will discuss this in a second. So, so you get the opposite. If anyone who knows DLA, you get the opposite uh, effect because in DLA you have this attraction to, to uh, 
uh, the attraction to, of, of uh, electromagnetic attraction to uh, uh, sharp edges, which is the cause for the growth in DLA, here works in the, oh, exactly the opposite direction, causing a, a, a rounding which is in fact very strong. Okay, and this, uh, and this was improved by many people since, uh, as uh, Margarita noted, uh, we should be careful when there are people in the audience who did some of the work. So, <laughs> so uh, 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 the strongest results are due to, um, let me not get the order, to uh, Jamison, Lionel Levine, and, and Scott Sheffield. And essentially, in parallel to uh, Aselach and Godier, oh dear, two L's, yes, that's what I thought. No, but I was wondering where, where the E is. Okay. Oh yes, where, where did that C come from? Oh God. I was so, so concerned about misspelling Godier that I didn't even bother to write Sheffield in English for myself. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> okay, sorry about And there is an E. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay. Any more remarks about the spelling of the authors? <laughs> good, good. So and, and this is all pretty recent work. So like uh, 12, 13, it was, you know, various... Uh, 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 in various papers where they did the two-dimensional, three-dimensional, and so on, let me not go deeply. And, but the point is that they sh what Lola, Brownson, and Griffith showed is that the the, if you look at, okay, if let AN be the set of empty space of eaten cookies, if you like, after N cookies have been eaten. Okay, so, so if you, if N is the volume of a Euclidean ball, then what Lolo, Bramson, and Griffith show that it's contained in a ball of radius R plus constant, if I remember correctly, one third, and is, uh, and, cont and, uh, is contained in a ball with, uh, with uh, R minus constant uh, R to uh, third. In which dimension? This, I think, is in all dimensions, though I didn't verify that before going, uh, before the, uh, the talk. This, uh, and, but these are certainly in all dimensions, and the, and, uh, okay, there is some dimension dependence, so that, you know. Which I forgot, but which I forget, but uh, I mean will correct me. So, and uh, I mean, what's the power of the log? So in dimension two, it's this. Dimension okay. three, it's higher square root of Aha. So, uh, so let's put it like this. <laughs> <laughs> so either log or square root log, depending on the dimension. Uh, and again, inner and outer bound. Questions about the statement of these results? Yes, let's, let's, so let me, let me, uh, in fact, even, uh, uh, oh dear, I shouldn't do that, right? Okay, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. It's not so intuitive. It's my first time. No, it's not. But uh, shh. <laughs> uh, okay. So. Um, so. Let me denote it like this. So a t. Now that would be a confusing notation. Okay. Um, a n. is 
the collection of all of all elements which are visited by the walk up to, uh, for some, it's sometimes smaller than t of n, and what is t of n is just uh, the time where uh, this set has size n. So uh, where t of n is defined by a n equal to n. Okay, is that uh, uh, clear? <laughs> Tn is that's what I just said. Tn. No, uh, let. But it's not a growth process. It's a cookie random walk. <laughs> Tn. No, I, there is a purpose here, which will become evident uh, in, in a few minutes. <laughs> Defined by a n equal to n. Okay, I'm sorry for, for skipping the words in the form, between the formulas. <laughs> what? What is PR? But ball of radius R. Yes, yeah, so, 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 so A of B R should be R to the D. So what why? A of B R is a set of size R to the D and it's very close to a ball. I didn't want to write R to the D because these are not up to constant results. And nobody remembers the, the constant in the volume of a ball. So <laughs> Okay, it's a gamma function. Uh, Nina, did you want to ask did you want to ask something? Yes. Yes. I don't see it from the definition. Why? There is, Tn is the time when the nth cookie is eaten, and the An is the all points that are equal to some, Ri is our walker, yes, maybe I should have said that. So it's all the points visited up to time Tn, so Okay, now it's okay. The other questions about notations? So can I just say that if I look at, run it for a long time, it looks like a ball. Yes, yes, but very sharply. Okay. Yes. So once you looked, so wh why did I bother you with the, with the cookie version? Because I want to draw some parallels this I can use, by, uh, this I can move by hand, right? So I want to do some parallels between cookie random walks. Once you see this as a cookie random walk, so it's very natural to ask, suppose I have weaker pull toward the center. Will this property of being a ball still survive? So let, let's, uh, let's make a list of, maybe I'll put the list here of Several models that uh, that are have that are similar in some kind of sense, but have weaker pull toward uh, toward the toward the center. So so what happens? Okay, let's call it R T. What happens? when a walker is not in AN. Let's make a, so in our model, in, in uh, IDLA, in classical IDLA, what happens is that RT plus one will be zero. So this is just the model that I just defined. Now, but you can say, okay, let's not jump directly to zero. Let's make a, just this one step towards zero. Okay, so, um, the actual, uh, okay, so this is the nearest neighbor mode. Okay, okay, let me uh, write first. So the actual details of how you do that is not, are not so important. But let's just say that they expect that you have some drift toward, toward the center. So you want the expectation of the next step to be, 
some constant times the, oh dear. Okay, so, so is that clear? So uh, you look at your position, you draw a, ve a unit vector in the direction of zero, that's why there is a minus, and you want that there is a drift in that direction. So this, this model is called uh, excited to the center. And uh, this question with the, with the logs, that, that's the work that you did with Benjamin and, and No, 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 no. This is the work of these, of all the guys okay. in, uh, on that line, in several papers, then done, you know, several uh, how, uh, intertwining papers of the two groups, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, no, 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 I, I will, uh, I haven't even yet stated the model okay. on which we work. <laughs> And then you will eat that, and then you will have again a drift, and so on. Okay, is that model clear? The excited to the center model? And, and one can think about an even weaker model, where when you eat a cookie, you don't have a drift toward the center, but just a drift toward where there are no cookies. Okay, so... Uh, for example, you can ask that the probability that RT plus one is some point X is proportional, would be proportional to say one plus some constant and just uh, the event that X is, okay, I'm starting to get run out of space. one plus some constant indicator that x is, is or isn't, is. <laughs> and this model has no name, but uh, it's, it's a cousin of once uh, reinforced. So I don't want, it's not exactly the model that you, people usually call once reinforced, but it's a cousin of it. Okay, so, so you have here some kind of, of hierarchy of models that uh, with weaker and weaker drift toward the center. Here it's not even clear why there should be a drift toward the center. It's just a drift toward, toward uh, uh, where there are no cookies. So maybe it creates effective drift toward the center, but maybe not. You know, it's not clear a priori. So what, what do we know about these models? Well, here there are some unsubstantiated claims that this model is recurrent in all dimensions. And, but no shape theorem, not, not, even, in, in, not even in a rough terms. So, so nobody can even claim that they can show that the set of, of uh, visited uh, sites has the right uh, order of size. Okay, here the situation is even worse. Uh, uh, this, this model or its cousins were hampered uh, by, uh, uh, for many years because people didn't even realize that sometimes there is an effective uh, drift. Okay, people thought it would just be simple random walk and in fact uh, there are results in, of, uh, of uh, Kesten, Duret, Kesten and Limits on trees that show that on a tree it's always transient, on a, on a regular tree. Uh, and actually, oh, right, right, and there is a, a new result, but, but on, so only a few years ago did people start to conjecture that in fact, depending on this parameter A, which is either beta or one over beta, <laughs> There should be a phase transition in the behavior. And this is wide open on lattices. Uh, uh, not, neither direction is known, but it was proved just last year by, uh, let me, uh, uh, 
let me, it was proved, uh, let, let that board be the references board by Kius and uh, Sidorovitsius uh, in 2016. So, but in which model? For polynomially growing trees. Okay, so, so they uh, examine the, this process on, uh, on polynomially growing trees and found a phase transition that if A is a large, so in the strong, it won't come out, that would it? Now, in the, <laughs> in the strong reinforcement regime, you have recurrence, and in the weak reinforcement regime, you have transients. Okay, so this is nice work, but, but uh, I like lattices. Yeah, just clarify, it's, it's only that one step when you eat cookie that has Yes, 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 yes. It's always under this assumption, which means that you're eating a cookie. And but, uh, yeah, these two models are nearest neighbors and, and are nearest neighbor models. Yeah, I didn't write that, but yeah, these are, both of them are nearest neighbor. Like these two. You don't have jumps like in the IDLA. So what happens when uh, you have one model that you know well and one model that you don't know anything about? You find something in the middle, right? <laughs> so, so, uh, so this is uh, what I want to talk to you about today. This is our work. Uh, and let me define now our model, let's call it UIDLA, as we call it in the, in the paper. Not that I like this name too much, but you know, a guy has to be decided at some point. Uh, and in this model, instead of being transported to zero, you are transported to a random place with no cookie. So uh, where is my notebook? Let me write it in a formula. Uh, so, Oh, maybe I will, but I didn't leave it. Ah, I can just lift this. So I'm sorry that it's out of order. Okay, so whenever you eat a cookie, you are transported to a random place which doesn't have a cookie. Okay, is the, and this is the model we are talking about today. From now on till the end of the lecture. Is this model clear? Okay, and our results are as for uh, I, I think I made a mistake there in the references. I think Lawler, Bramson, and Griffith, they just showed O small of R, and maybe it was Lawler later who did the R to the third. Yes, so sorry about that. So at least no, but none of them are here. So, <laughs> so our results are as for the results of Lawler. Uh, for this uniform IDLA model, you have A B R is contained in a ball of of some power. We cannot uh, this, uh, give any reasonable bound on the power, but you know some power smaller than one and is contained in a ball of, sorry, and contains a ball of smaller radius. Okay? And, and all this is, of course, uh, okay. 
And uh, this is, of course, asymptotic. So if you want, this constant is uh, random. But, uh, or, you know, that it holds for a fixed constant for uh, 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 from a random time on. Uh, which C? This one? We don't have a good estimate for that. I wouldn't, you know, at this point, I, do, I don't want to put a numerical value. But, but do you have a conjecture? I don't even, maybe it's logarithmic like in the usual case. I, it's, you know, simulations, simulations certainly show, you know, just, you know, if you just look at them, it seems like the perturbations are larger than the classical model. But I wouldn't go as far as claiming something asymptotic. They may be only larger by a constant. You know, we have no good, no good. Also, there is a problem of drift of the center point. No, okay, okay, maybe that's not negligible in most dimensions. Uh, um, no, okay, maybe the drift of the center point is negligible, but uh, no, we don't have a good conjecture if there is what's the constant and even if it's not log or that it's not logarithmic. So all issues of uh, perturbations are at this point uh, wide open. Yes, I, maybe I should have said that you know part of the result of of, of the left uh, most team like Jason, Levine, and Sheffield is some kind of uh, a free field uh, uh, um, that perturbation converged to some free field in some sense. So, so for the classical model, the uh, perturbations are completely, completely understood. But, uh, but here we don't have even a conjecture at this point. Further questions? OK, yes. Yes, it's not so difficult to calculate. I just, I just, because it's not interesting, I forgot to check before the lecture. But I think it's something like square root n in dimension one. That's obvious. But maybe it's dimension two, it's already constant. I don't remember if it's constant or logarithmic in dimension two. Yes, Shaolin. Yes, that's what I said, that you can either take you have two options. I'm giving you two wonderful options. The first one is to take C random or to take C fixed. And, but then it holds only for uh, R bigger than R0 random. And all uh, variables are, uh, and the, the, this, uh, the tail of R0 would be super polynomial, so no problem. Does that, that, that answer your questions, Jolene? Okay. Okay, so since I have a few, uh, even 20 minutes left, I will do this un uncivilized thing of showing you some bits of the proof. Uh, so, so the proof has two, two main components. The first is stability, the stability claim. And the second is a, somehow in con, some kind of convergence toward the limit. Let me first uh, state what do I mean by stability. But what do I mean by stability is that if you assume, suppose you assume that a of uh, b some k is just equal to the ball of radius k. k of course, this ball, yes? I don't need to explain okay, Suppose you assume that, OK? Or, or you start the process at this point, yes? Then from this, you can conclude that this property is preserved. And let me write explicitly what I mean. Was there a question? Okay, let me finish. Hold with the questions until I'm finished.
Okay, so, so what, what I'm claiming, if you start with a ball, then this is preserved. For every n bigger than k, this ball will still, will, okay, there will be some uh, perturbations naturally, but the ball, it will be contained in a ball, and will contain ball, a ball. Notice here that the arrow is in k, and not in n. Okay, of course, in retrospect, we know that you can improve this to a, a mistake in k, but this is just a lemma. Okay, so uh, uh, there is a mistake in k, and this, all this happens with, uh, this stands for super polynomially large probability. Oh, in k also. Okay, so, uh, so that means that, you know, for every, you know, the probability is smaller asymptotically, asymptotically than k to the minus 100, k to the minus 1,000, any power that you like. Okay, is the statement of the lemma clear? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, if you want non-Euclidean, you have to uh, change your random walk or something. Uh, it's, it's difficult to play with the shape uh, in either this model or in the classical uh, ideal A model. Uh, the random walk really wants to be round. <laughs> No, 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 no. This is already a, a statement in probability. So, if probability bigger than one minus k to the minus a hundred, say, this holds for a const, fixed constant, a non, a non, non, non random constant. Okay? And the second step is an improvement step. Let me just state the lemma. Uh, so, Suppose, uh, let me just do not, okay, suppose, okay, let's continue to call it R. Oh, maybe not. No, okay, let's call it N. So suppose A is between two balls. Think about lambda as a constant, 10. Okay, so suppose A is between two balls. A, A, uh, K, okay? And suppose, though, that K is bigger than the size of the ball times one plus another constant, times 1.1. There are additional uh, particles that, you know, I'm not assuming too much about their position. Okay, I'm just counting them. Can you see if I write here or? Ah, I write here. Then from this you can conclude that after enough time, you get a bit rounder. So let me write this explicitly. Um, let me write only only one direction <coughs> so you add you add vertices until in fact, a new scale is, arrived, is achieved. You move from a set with k particles, or k eaten cookies, if you like, to a set with k times three lambda to the d. So everything should be multiplied, uh, grow, uh, should, should grow by three lambda. In particular, uh, if you use the first lemma, and some monotonicity that maybe I will explain, but probably not, then you will get that a that this is between b three lambda n and the three lambda square n, but in fact you get more than three lambda n. You get three lambda n and a bit. So this is the and again this happens with super polynomially large probability. And from these two, and this means that uh, 
uh, as you gr grow from scale to scale, the amount that you lose gets, becomes smaller and smaller. Okay? You get closer and closer to a ball. Is this lemma clear? Is the statement of the lemma clear? Uh, in, in K, yes, yes. Yes, here it's not clear even what are the options. <laughs> yes. Okay. Other questions about the statements of, uh, of these two lemmas? Maybe I will. Okay, let's. Okay. Uh, well, I could uh, release you and spare the proof. But maybe I will say something about the proof of lemma 2. Um, okay, maybe before I start, what is more or less uh, standard in this business is that an inner bound implies an out outer bound. This argument goes all the way back to Lola Bramson Griffith, and it's very, very intuitive. Once you have a good inner bound, then you don't have many particles left. So, if you want to, and so all you are trying to claim here is there are not, not enough particles left, and these particles cannot uh, somehow arrange themselves in a long, thin uh, pertub perturbation, but this is really. But this will require that all of them somehow miraculously go through that perturbation without going to the side. It's not possible, and it's easy to, form to formalize. And this is what people who have been doing, uh, this argument is what people who have been doing IDLA usually use. This is what uh, Lola Bronson Griffith used, this is what Lola used. And, and we have the, uh, uh, the pleasure of using this argument twice. <laughs> We first use it for lemma one. Once we get the inner bound, which is harder, we conclude the outer bound. Then, because lemma two requires an outer bound, <laughs> only then can we prove lemma two, get, an, uh, get the inner bound of the theorem, and then use this argument again to get the outer bound. So, but this argument is, I think, standard in the business, so, so let me not, not go into details. About, about this argument. Let me, very, uh, let me show you. So let me just show you the proof of lemma 2 in a picture. The picture of the proof of lemma 2, let me put it this way. So what do we have? We have two balls. Okay? And a set that is somehow, somewhat in a somewhat uncontrollable way between them. And now we want to add particles to get to a larger scale. And now we use a very beautiful property of IDLA, which is that you can add, if you know where the particles start, you can add them in any order that you like. Okay? So what do we do? We first add only the particles that would fall inside this ball. We use lemma one to claim that this ball grows to a larger ball. And then, and after that only, we add the particle that would have fallen in, in this ameba region. Okay? In, not in, in the, sorry, in the ameba without its, its, uh, without its nucleus. You know, an ameba has a nucleus, even though it's a, it's a unicellular uh, organism. It still has a nucleus. So, uh, uh, after that, you add the particles here and let them go. But now, they walk in, inside the ball, which is completely eaten. So they have time to mix. So by the time they get out, they get out in a pretty uniform uh, way. And you can use the usual IDLA argument to claim that you add 
another, essentially another layer to your ball. And uh, even though I have 10 more minutes, I'm not sure any other parts of the proof would be as enlightening. So, so that's my favorite part. So, and uh, why bother you with the parts that are not my favorite? <laughs> okay, let me finish here.